Hello, my fellow scientists. Welcome to another episode of Science is Everywhere, the home edition. My name is Marie Lankin. I'm from the Children's Discovery Museum of San Jose, and hopefully you're joining us for another activity that has to do with mazes. We're doing all types of maze activities and reading maze books this week. So being that we are midweek, hopefully you've been able to catch some art as well as some stories, and we will continue with it on Friday with some more really fun things. So, of course, this is where we bring that theme into science. So how are we going to bring a maze into science? Well, in looking at a maze, let's show an example really quick. Here is a maze that I used when going to an actual corn maze that was really close to Sacramento. Take a look. Now, here's something else that made me think of mazes that maybe are connected a little bit more into what we would think of as real life. This is a map from Sanborn County Park. Check it out. So what's similar with the two? Both of them, you have to imagine where you are. Either you imagine where you are in the maze or you imagine where you are on the map. And then you think about, okay, where do I want to finish? In the maze, you're going to finish in a certain spot. So you have to think about the turns and how to get there. Same thing with a map. You have to think about the turns and how you're going to get to that finish point, whether it be back to your car or wherever it might be. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make something that will help us out with those directions. We're going to make a compass, one that you can actually use when you're outside. So what are we gonna need for this experiment? We're gonna go through our materials as normal and you're gonna notice they're split up into two groups. Then we'll go ahead and we'll make our compass and we'll go outside and we'll calibrate our compass. I'll talk about that word a little bit more in a few. And then we'll come back and talk about how this compass worked. So first of all, let's check out our materials. Here are all of the things you are going to need for this. Okay, so here are all of our materials laid out before us. <laughs> we have a couple of different types of materials. We have ones that we're going to use inside, and I'll use one color to name those. And then we have ones that we're going to be using outside, and I'll use another color for those. So starting at the top on the left, there's just a cleaned out plastic container. It used to have food in it. Then right underneath that, you have a needle, and that might be the hardest thing to see. <laughs> and this is just a regular metal sewing needle. Then under that, we've got just some tape. Right next door, there is a pill container, and that's because I'm gonna need to make a circle. So this is to trace. You don't absolutely need this, but it helps. Then if we're tracing something, chances are we're going to be cutting it out. So we have scissors there. Then up at the top on the right, we have a permanent marker. And that one I'm actually going to use inside and outside. So maybe I'll find a color that's in between those two in order to show you that. But you just want to keep that pen with you all the time. Then going for the outside materials, we have a magnet. You'll probably get that from the inside. We'll use it outside. Piece of chalk, a stick, which hopefully you'll find outside, and then a container with a little bit of water in it. And that may be hard to see as well. If you have something that's plastic, I recommend that a little bit more than glass. Um, I just use glass because that was what I had. And then one thing that you don't see here, very hard to put on a table, is you're going to need a sunrise or a sunset. And we'll tell you why in just a second. So pick your best time of your day. Either you want to get up in the morning and see the sun rising um, or in the afternoon when the sun is setting. It doesn't have to be exactly when it rises or sets, so don't worry about it getting up too early or staying up too late. It can be just really close to the horizon. All right, so now that we have all of our things and we know what goes where, let's go ahead and put this guy together.
just happened. <laughs> we had a little needle taped to plastic that we then floated in water and it turned all by itself. Or did it? There may be some science involved there. <laughs> so let's review what we did and maybe why this is acting the way it is. So we took a magnet and we took our needle and we chose a side of the needle and a side of the magnet and just scraped against it for a little while. What we're doing is we're building up a magnetic field or a magnetic charge. We're turning this needle into a little magnet. Well, this needle is going to react or be attracted to another magnet, just like you probably played with refrigerator magnets. But where was the magnet that it was being attracted to? I'll give you a hint, it's a huge one that we stand on every day. It's the Earth. The Earth can actually be considered a magnet. It has north and south poles that are magnetically charged, just like what we did to this needle here. So when we float this needle in the water, it turns just and is attracted just like two magnets that you may be playing with at home from the fridge. Well, once it turns, it's going to point north and south. But other than that little X that said which side we charged, we don't know which side is pointing north and which side is pointing south when we're outside. Okay, so this is where calibration is going to help us. Calibration is measuring by using information that you have to make sure something is correct. I used the sun in order to calibrate or measure the rest of my compass to go ahead and figure out which way was north. I used a sunrise, and I know that if the sun rises in the eastern direction and sets in the western direction. So, if it's rising from one side, when I set that stick down, there's going to be a shadow pointing the other way. Well, if it's rising in the east, that shadow pointing the other way is going to be pointed to the west. Now, if I was using a sunset, it would be the other way around. Well, once I figure out with that stick and that piece of chalk which way west and east is, now I can figure out that north 
is that direction and south would be the other way. I can figure out the other three directions. Okay, cool. So now we have a magnet or excuse me, a compass that works. How do we use that with our maps? Well, let's look a little bit closer at that sandbar map. There's something hiding in there. Let me show you. It's really, really small. That's what's called a compass rose. And that tells you which direction is north. And from there, you can calibrate or figure out the other three directions. Well, if you have your compass with you, now you can figure out, okay, my compass is saying this is north. The map is saying this is north. When I can get those two lined up, I can now figure out by imagining where I stand on the map, how to go ahead and use those different paths to get to where I want to finish. Sounds very complex. So I highly recommend going out and trying this. If you have uh, parks nearby, it's always fun to do that. Or if you have a maze nearby, I know once fall hits, we may see a little bit more pumpkin patches and things like that. And you may be able to use these with that as well. So in the short term, what I would like you to do is hold on to that compass because I have a friend and colleague on Friday, you may have seen some of her programs before, Eco Explorers. Caitlin is going to be making a sundial using our compass. So you may need to recharge your compass because that needle's not gonna hold on to that charge for very long, um, but she'll go ahead and remind you on how to do that on Friday. And then you'll go ahead and use it for yet another experiment when you're outside. Pretty cool. So. As I mentioned last week, we're still celebrating our 30 years of memories for the museum. So even if you have a memory just from today or this week, show us and share your memories with us. We always love to see what you guys are doing at home. Um, especially during these times, we're all kind of taking care of each other. Just gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling. So thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this activity. You get a chance to use it not only on Friday, but maybe outside in uh, your camping trips or your hiking trips, etc. And I will see you next time at Science is Everywhere. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching our virtual Purple Museums broadcast. If you're enjoying this content, please consider making a donation to support our efforts. Our summer broadcasts are every Wednesday and Friday on Facebook and YouTube. Stay in the loop by joining our email list. Visit www.cdm.org and sign up today.